Today on Southern Accent Foods, I'll show you how to make two slow cooker classics. I've got an easy recipe for smothered pork chops with mushroom gravy, and a pot roast with some unusual ingredients. Plus, I've got three slow cooker mistakes to avoid. Let's get started. We'll start with these beautiful pork shoulder blade steaks. This is the equivalent of what would be called a seven bone chuck roast in beef, but I'll talk more about that later. Salt these up and hit them with a good grinding of black pepper seasoned on both sides. Canola oil in a saute pan over medium heat. Get the chops in and cook until nicely browned about five or six minutes per side. Set the chops aside and add in one diced medium onion. Season with salt and that good old pepper again. Stir and cook for about five or six minutes or until softened. If the bits on the bottom are getting too dark, you can deglaze them with some water or chicken stock to loosen them up. Add in some sliced or minced garlic and cook for about one more minute. Set aside with your chops. Toss in a pound of sliced mushrooms. I'm using cremini mushrooms, but use whatever you like. Obligatory salt and pepper. Cook until they've gone nice and brown and set aside with your pork chops and your onions. Pour in about one third of a cup of chicken stock. Stir to get all those brown bits loosened up, but don't reduce it. You'll need it for the gravy. You're gonna need one can of cream of mushroom soup to make the sauce, plus one can of cream of celery soup. Get both of those into a bowl. Add in one packet of onion soup mix. Pour in your deglazing liquid and stir this all together. Okay, most of the work is done. Get your pork into the slow cooker, top with the onions and the mushrooms. Smother everything with the sauce and try to stir it up a little bit. Cover this up and cook with confidence on low for about six hours. Start checking after about four or five hours and give it a quick stir every two hours or so. When it's done, garnish with some chopped chives or parsley and serve it up over some noodles or mashed potatoes, or for me, good old white rice. Okay, there's a caveat about the uh, smothered pork chops. Watch your sodium. That onion soup mix can be really salty, so use the low sodium or no sodium canned soups for that. Okay, mistake number one. Slow cooker mistake number one. Not knowing the right cut of meat to use. You need something with some fat, some connective tissue, and if possible, a bone. All of that fat and that connective tissue will sort of melt and dissolve into the sauce and it makes it very unctuous. You can use sirloin chops if you can find them. That would be my number one. You can use the rib chops with the bone. What you don't want to use is the center cut boneless pork chops there's, they're too lean that they don't have any fat comparatively, no connective tissue. They don't, they're not suited for this type of cooking. And especially, this is a biggie, boneless, skinless chicken breasts. If I catch you putting boneless, skinless chicken breasts in a slow cooker, I will come through this screen, I will put you over my knee, and I will give you a good see into. I will do it. Don't make me come in there. Mistake number two is cooking for too long. A lot of these recipes I see, they say, all right, put it on, uh, put your stuff in the slow cooker and put it on high for 12 hours. That's way too long. I, I like to cook uh, red beans for red beans and rice. If you put red beans in a slow cooker for 12 hours, you're going to come back to a puree. Go on the, the low side. Start with low and start checking your stuff after about four hours. You know, most of the stuff I do is cooked in about four to six hours. I understand the convenience of putting it in there before you go to work. You come back eight or ten hours later. But if you can, if you're on a weekend day or something and you're at home, give it a shot. Just put your, put your stuff in there and check it after about four to six hours. And it doesn't need to go for like 10, 12 hours most of the time. Okay, let's get back at it. Now I'm going to make this delicious pot roast with a couple of unusual ingredients. 
Start with a chuck roast like this. I usually get one that's about two and a half to three pounds. Salt and pepper on both sides. Canola oil in a large Dutch oven and get the chuck roast in. Cook until nicely browned on both sides, about five or six minutes per side. In the same pan, add in one medium diced onion and two or three ribs of celery chopped up as well. Season with salt, freshly ground black pepper, and your favorite Cajun or Creole seasoning. Stir and cook for about six or seven minutes or until softened. Add in a couple cloves of sliced or minced garlic and about two tablespoons of tomato paste. Stir and cook for one more minute. Really try to get that tomato paste in contact with the heat on the bottom of the pan. Add in one pound of peeled carrots cut into nice big pieces and also one pound of parsnips prepped the same way. If you don't like parsnips, you could just do two pounds of carrots. One russet potato peeled and diced kind of large as well. There's definitely a good bit of veg in this. Pour in about one half cup of tomato puree. I use San Marzano tomatoes that I puree with a stick blender. Stir all this together to coat lightly. Now we're gonna get weird. Pour in about two tablespoons of vinegar. I'm using apple cider vinegar, but use whatever you like, maybe except for balsamic vinegar. Sprinkle in about one half teaspoon of Dutch processed cocoa powder and give it a light sprinkling of cinnamon. I'll go over all this in a minute. Stir it all up again. Okay, I'm gonna to talk to you about some of these ingredient choices that might seem a little bit unusual for a pot roast. We're starting with these vegetables. The onion and the celery are mainly water. They're gonna give that up into the sauce. And then the other vegetables, uh, the carrots especially have quite a bit of sugar and what all and the onion too and when they give up that liquid that water the apparent sweetness of the vegetable is going to be amplified especially carrots carrots if you slow cook them on their own and just a little bit of butter they will turn into almost like candy so now we've got this sweetness we want to balance that with some acidity you saw we used a little bit of uh, just a little bit of apple cider vinegar, right? You don't need much, just a touch, just to kind of balance out that sweetness that's going to become sort of apparently concentrated. Now we have the acid. We want to balance that with something. There's something in the baking aisle that you could use to balance the acidity, and that would be baking soda. We're going to balance the acidity, not with more sugar, but with an alkaline ingredient. You could use baking soda. It would work, but it probably wouldn't give you much in the way of flavor. There is, however, another ingredient that sits right next to the baking soda in the baking aisle or close by anyway, and that is Dutch process cocoa powder. That cocoa powder has been treated with an alkaline. It is important to use Dutch process, not the regular, because you want that alkalinity to balance that acidity. So now we've come around, we've balanced our sweetness with acid, we've balanced our acidity with alkalinity. Now we're going to add one more base note, this, this is a common ingredient you might see in the south of France or around the Mediterranean with beef, and that is cinnamon. You don't want it to taste like red hot, you know, red hot candy, but if you get a good wine, like a, uh, like a Zinfandel is my favorite, something spicy, you take a bite of the beef stew or the pot roast, you take a bite of, or take a sip of the wine, and you're going to go, wow, that cinnamon really makes sense. So those are the unusual ingredients. Get most of the vegetables into your slow cooker. Lay that browned chuck roast right on top and arrange the rest of the vegetables around the roast. Get a bay leaf in there, as well as a few sprigs of fresh thyme or rosemary, your choice, or use both, be a maverick. Cover it up and cook with confidence on low. Check for doneness starting at about six hours. Where's the liquid, you might ask? I'll talk about that too. Okay, the next slow cooker mistake is using too much liquid. You saw in the pot roast, I didn't put hardly any liquid at all. A couple of tablespoons of vinegar and half a cup of tomato puree. If the recipe calls for you to put like a bottle of wine in there, <laughs> don't put a bottle of wine in the slow cooker. And you don't need to use two quart, you know, 32 ounce containers of beef broth or beef stock or anything like that. Next time you use the slow cooker, 
think about the amount of liquid is going to be released from whatever you're cooking. In this case, the pot roast and the vegetables are going to give up quite a bit of liquid. You don't need any. Next time you, you cook something in a slow cooker, trust the process. Don't drown it. This thing is going to be falling apart when it's done. Garnish with some chopped chives and serve with noodles, mashed potatoes, or once again for me, white rice. All right, this video is part of a collab. The hashtag is slow cook family. Uh, I will do my best to get the other videos in, in a link in the description or a comment. I, I'm, I might make a playlist, but if you search for hashtag slow cook family, you should be able to find the rest of the videos. Slow cookers are great. It's one of my favorite things. I like to cook for leftovers. You can uh, cook a big batch of stuff and put it in individual containers and freeze it. So you got leftovers. You can just pop in the microwave real quick. You know what the best thing about a slow cooker is? You can put all your ingredients in there right before you go to sleep. And then in the evening when the guests come over, they'll think you worked hard cooking and they won't realize that you slept all day. <laughs> okay, I've got another great video for you to watch right here. Click on that and I'll see you there.